We live in the age of democracy, a form of government in which people elect representatives to hold positions in the state and create laws that are enforced upon the population. Since the end of the 18th century, uprisings have erupted across the world, overthrowing kings and emperors, establishing governments in which anyone can run for office and represent their community, class, belief or people. But our society is still as unequal as the dictatorships and empires that preceded it. Decolonization, the end of formal slavery, and the inclusion of women in work and politics were not enough to end class inequality, racism or patriarchy. What we saw was just people of our own race or gender practicing the same policies that exclude most of us, keeping the abyss between rich and poor people intact. So what is missing for a society to be truly free and equal? Even after the victory of socialist revolutions around the world and the end of the civil military dictatorships in Latin America, the new government kept the very institutions created by empires to dominate and oppress the people. Armies, police, prisons, borders, judicial systems, and the division between rulers and subjects, workers and management. These institutions were created to protect the ruling class the nobility back then. Today they protect the financial elites or the party leadership. Almost every movement, electoral or revolutionary, that has tried to take control of the state has ended up reproducing the same dynamics of domination and oppression. How can we expect equality if society is always divided between those in charge and those who obey? How can we expect those who control institutions like police and prisons to work for justice and the common good? Is voting for representatives the only or best tool to have our voices heard and our needs met by society? If elections do not truly represent or give a voice to most people, what has gone wrong? What could be better than voting? Absolutist regimes are naturally unstable. The tyrant who rules only according to his wishes and whims easily arouses the revolt of the oppressed classes and internal disputes among members of the elite. When the people overthrew the monarchies, new elites like the bourgeoisie rushed to take control of the new ways of governing. They soon discovered that voting is a great tool to pacify the anger of groups that felt excluded from political processes. Instead of rising to overthrow a king, why not wait another four years and elect a new president? The power to decide is still in the hands of a few people, but now no one can say that people are not heard. Voting has become a tool to legitimize governments, while transferring our ability to act and change reality to professional politicians, limiting popular participation to a single question, who will be in charge? All other questions are decided solely by whoever is elected to do so. If we want to run for election, we need money, influence, alliances with different parties and vast resources to have any chance of winning. In short, elections are a mechanism that limits the participation of the majority while allowing a minority to use millionaire campaigns to come to power. Thus, the same elites and families take turns in government, while others spend decades as congressmen, monopolizing positions for generations. Their activities are solely focused on governing, so it is hard to think they could represent anyone other than their own class of rulers.
One of the biggest arguments in favour of representative democracy is the supposed guarantee that the people will choose who will be in charge for a limited time. Through the vote, we can remove from power those who do not work for the common good. Moreover, the division of power into executive, legislative and judiciary branches, each regulating and watching over each other, is held up as a protection against the emergence of authoritarian regimes. Yet, many of the worst regimes in history have taken control of the state through elections. Adolf Hitler, for example, was appointed Chancellor of Germany by the Nazi party through democratic means. The vote of a majority of people who are eligible to vote is not the same as the vote of all people, nor is it enough to prevent tyrants or racists coming to power. Donald Trump, Jair Bolsonaro and Rodrigo Duterte were all elected even though they promote hate speech, racism and chauvinism and they were not even really chosen by a majority. Trump did not even get a majority of votes that were cast, and Bolsonaro was elected by the votes of less than 40% of the electorate. Another problem with representative democracy is that it allows for measures of exclusion and oppression that function much in the same way as dictatorships. Just remember that the oppression of Standing Rock began under Obama and only continued under Trump. For those in marginalized groups, or whose existence and culture are an obstacle to colonial and capitalist forces, democracy can be as violent as a dictatorship, even under a left-wing government. Sometimes a candidate comes up with a speech that sums up what everyone has been feeling and saying for a long time. Someone emerges who seems to come from outside of the world of politics and who is really one of us. This person convinces us that the system can be reformed to function properly with justice and equality if the right people are in office. So much of the energy that would be used to fight the system and promote direct change is used to support yet another government that will inevitably let us down. And in the end, the state structure will come out with more legitimacy and we will come out with less practice and experience in direct action and self-organization. These alternative candidates only receive the attention and support that they do because they are shaped by popular feelings. They often attempt to come to power by leaning on the efforts of grassroots and social movements, co-opting their struggles. But their politics and actions do not reach the roots of the issues and are limited to masking structural problems. They change the discourse but remain mere managers of politics and the economy, like all those before them. So should we invest our energy in supporting these politicians? Or in building mobilizations that create enough pressure to make governments yield to our most radical demands and needs? We are often terrified by the possibility of our country being ruled by the worst possible candidate. But the real problem is the concentration of so much power in the institutions of government. Were it not for this, we would not be so afraid of authoritarian, fascist and racist individuals taking office whenever there is an election. As long as there are states and other institutions that concentrate power, there is always a risk that fascists will take control and threaten our freedom and our lives. Rather than despairing and trying to put someone who represents us at the top of these institutions, we need to build forms of distributed, decentralized power that make these institutions obsolete. Democracy is a game where results can change, but the rules will remain the same. Like an open world video game, which creates the illusion that we have the freedom to make our own choices, when in fact the only possible choices are those created by whoever programmed the game. Of course, there are differences between Lula and Bolsonaro, between Biden and Trump, 
But those changes made by a democratic government, even one with a high degree of competency and intentions, are very restricted and can easily be undone by its successor. So, it's important that we invest our energy in more efficient ways, opposing the power of the state and all the institutions that concentrate the power that is ripped away from us. We need more efficient tools to prevent tyrants from controlling the state. We need to ensure that those who cannot win elections have their existence and needs protected. How many more centuries will it take us to agree that representative democracy cannot keep its promises? But if representative democracy only serves to keep us under the control of the new modern elites, what alternatives exist to voting and elections? How can we apply the changes we want without waiting for governments and capitalists to decide for us? Voting is like a job. The only thing worse than living with one is having to live without one. Therefore, the simple opposition between voting and not voting is insufficient. It is necessary to rephrase the question. Some people will say that we have to boycott the elections. Others will say that those who don't vote or who choose not to vote at all cannot complain. These people will accuse those who didn't vote of having allowed fascists like Bolsonaro to come to power. But regardless of whether or not we vote, we need ways to distribute power, the ability to make decisions and apply them in our lives without waiting for orders or permissions. History shows us that participating in electoral politics means giving up on building a collective oppositional force in order to deliver even more power and legitimacy to the very political institutions that tomorrow may be in the hands of dictators and authoritarians. Whether they assume power through a coup d'etat or by way of democratic elections such as Bolsonaro, Trump and Hitler did. Therefore, instead of just asking someone to vote or not, let's try forms of political action that may make a concrete and immediate difference to us and our communities so that we can act directly on the issues most important to our lives. There are several tools and paths we can follow that, rather than taking power away from us and handing it to politicians, directly empower us and our communities. These include direct action, consensus decision making, the search for autonomy, the construction of interdependent federations and networks, transformative methods of conflict resolution, the creation of spaces of encounter and exchange, and other possibilities to foster decentralization, horizontalism, solidarity, mutual support, and a more equal, just, and free world. Don't wait for permission or direction from some authority. Don't beg for some higher power to organize your life for you. Take the initiative with your community. Societies always seek more efficient ways to organize themselves. Popular discontent is a continuous force for change. In fact, democracy is one of the best and most efficient forms of government that has ever existed. It allows us some measure of voice in our affairs. In theory, anyone can participate in government and become president, even without having been chosen by God or needing blood ties to a ruling dynasty that's been in power for centuries. However, over the last 200 years, practice has shown us that even democratic governments, elected by popular vote, must align themselves with the ruling class in order to be able to govern, thereby maintaining deep political and economic inequalities. Therefore, our search cannot end here. We need to look at the history of social revolutions and other societies and cultures 
that have lived and organized in different ways. Ways that were more horizontal and actually guaranteed autonomy and protection against inequality and domination. Voting for a class of representatives and expecting them to solve our problems is to accept a policy of passivity. Organizing within communities and broader networks towards a goal of mutual aid and direct action. This is a policy for those who do not just want to watch and wait, but for those who want to take control of their lives and fight for a society based on justice and equality. If all the energy and resources wasted on political campaigns that don't even win elections were used to strengthen and serve communities, we would be in a much better situation. Why not experiment with something radically different from now on? If, for many people, bourgeois democracy and capitalism seem invincible and impossible to get rid of, it's worth remembering that empires, legalized slavery, and the divine right of kings also seemed invincible until the eve of their fall. No matter who will be elected, we will be ungovernable. <laughs>